First and foremost, I want to say Kal Halayim Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Harakat Kadash or Dam. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule and teach well. And right, once again, it's always good to shout out the men that gave you this truth. Okay, men, not women. All right, there's no fucking woman, man. Woman can teach me nothing, man. Shalom to the hopeful elect. All right. It's your little brother here, Shema Shaman. <laughs> but another video, and uh, we're just going to hop right in. I'll probably title it, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll title it, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll go into the video, then I'll think of a title. This is the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 1. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. Okay. Who who is who is who is this talking about, right? Because when you read this, right, they'll say, "Oh, that's that's Solomon." Okay. Solomon. Okay, right. When you, when you go into I believe First Samuel, right, King David said his son, if he goes off, I'll chastise him with the rod of man. All right. Solomon wasn't exactly chastised with the rod of man. Who was that talking about? It's talking about Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai came out of the line of King David. Okay, Solomon is kind of lightly hitting on it. Okay, Solomon, King Solomon, okay, is Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation. Solomon reincarnated as Yahweh Shai. Okay, and there's many videos that you can go into, many, many different scriptures that break down reincarnation. The fact that I believe Solomon rode into Jerusalem upon an ass or a fowl or foal, F O A L. And then Yahweh Shai did the same thing. He rode, in, rode into Jerusalem the same way Solomon did to the same person. Okay? I myself also am a mortal man. Okay? Solomon. Okay? But it also goes into Yahweh Shai. Like to all and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. Okay? Now, who was the first offspring that was made on the earth? Okay? It was Adam. Adam was the first created. Okay, he was he was one of the first men, well he was the first man upon the earth, you know. But I guess in a different way, now brothers, you tell me if I'm off on this, this could also mean the most high, you know, which the most high wasn't made, so it'd have to be talking about Adam. Okay, because no one made the most high. That's why he's called the ancient of days. So I'm this is talking about Adam. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months. Huh? Ten months, I thought I'd take nine. No, it says 10 there, okay, 10 is just merely a number of completion. It means a certain amount of time, okay? In the ancient world, they didn't have, they weren't counting the months that it take for a child to be born exactly, okay? So they will give you an approximate number or they'll use a number of completion, okay? So 10 is merely a, a completed number, okay? Being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. Okay, that seed of man, right? When a man ejaculates into a woman, the cells, the sperm cells, they get into the woman and they mix, right? They start to um, they start to grow inside the woman. You know, they move around and they get into her, you know, to her womb. You know, they start to grow. They start to to divide and 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 you know develop. And over time, they become, you know, a, a zygote, and they become a uh, a little fetus in there they start to, to, to become a body okay now these scientists will say oh that you can be born a man now this is something that they say actually it's called intersex which is a bunch of bullshit I will make a video debunking that very soon okay but I have a teacher in here a human sexuality teacher that is a dyke okay that had child by artificial insemination which is completely off according to scriptures and she says that when you're born that everyone starts as a female and that your body changes while you're growing and i was listening to it and i was just playing dumb you know in these classes you have to ask you have to ask questions or else they'll uh, ding you for participation so pretty much the school is almost pointing a gun to your head saying if you do not show interest in these classes well we're gonna take points away so i played dumb and I asked her a question i was like Okay, so what you're saying is such and such, right? Is that, that's all you have to do in these classes. Play stupid, okay? Play stupid. And then, you know, they'll answer the question and keep it moving. <laughs> but she says that, oh, everyone starts as a woman, but in the womb you change and you get the Y chromosome and you become a man. Bullshit. 
the Most High knows you before you even put into the womb, before you even have thought. And I believe there's a scripture on that. You know, one of your brothers could uh, find it, you know. But once again, Solomon was born that way. Yahweh Shai was born that way. He was started out as cells, okay? And then he went inside, you know, the cells, the sperm cells. They went into those chromosomes, genetic information went inside, you know, Mary. And then the cells grew over time. And then, boom, Yahweh Shai was born, okay? Of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. What is it talking about? Being inside the, the belly, okay? Solomon had a different kind of intellect. Okay, he, he was able to remember this. You know, most people don't remember this. You know, but Solomon had a certain kind of intellect, a certain kind of mind, and he was very wise. He had a certain kind of mind where he could he could know certain things and, and bring it out that other people would hear and be like, What? You know? Solomon Solomon was just like that, alright. And when I was born I drew in the common air. Okay, the common air. All right, when he was born, he drew in the common air, the air that we all breathe, and fell upon the earth. Fell upon the earth, which is of like nature, and the first voice which I uttered was crying as all others do. We're going to read that again. And when I was born, I drew in the common air. Okay, Solomon, okay, who came back as Yahweh Shai, breathed the same air that we do, even though our air is a little bit more fucked up, and fell upon the earth, okay? When you go into it, right? Back then in the ancient world, women used to actually give birth um, squatting, you know? Women used to give birth squatting in a, in a sort of squatting position, okay? But nowadays, they do it lying on their back. And I have this article here, why the women give birth lying on their back, and we're going to go into it. And you're going to find that it's going to have a, a bit of a, a interesting history, and you're not going to be surprised who it came out of, okay? So why do women give birth lying on their backs? Uh, Deborah Waters on GoodTo.com um, or GoodToKnow.com. Deborah Waters, June 24th, 2021. The why do women give birth lying on their backs? The idea of women giving birth lying on their backs on a bed wasn't actually introduced until around the 1700s, according to hypnobirthing expert Catherine Graves. 1700s. Okay, so what was going on in the 1700s? Okay, I believe the Renaissance period ended around 1600s, late 1500s. I may be wrong on that. But um, who, who was in rulership at that time period? Okay, Esau Edom. And we're going to keep reading on. Writing in her well-known publication, The Hypnobirthing Book, Catherine explains that women only began to give birth flat on their backs because King Louis XIV, an Edomite, wanted to see his mistress give birth, not because it aided labor. So he just did it for his own convenience. He changed things because of his pride, because he could. At the time, women generally labored squatting on stools, and the midwife would usually be at the floor level to meet the baby. Okay, that's why Yahweh Shai said he fell upon the earth. Okay, because women used to give birth sitting on a stool, and the baby would fall out and, and land on, a, on you know, some sort of towel or meet the midwife, you know? And the midwife would usually be at the floor level to meet the baby. But kings don't grovel on the floor, so it all had to be uh, frightfully proper. And his mistress had to lay in a bed, Captain writes. Okay, so he said, oh, because of his pride, he said, oh, I'm not going to lay down and, and kneel down to watch this baby be born. You're going to have to get on a fucking bed. Okay? Women in the king's court copied this, and midwives found they had much more difficulty getting babies out when mothers lay flat. So doctors were called in a lot more often. Okay? Let's get some scriptures. This is the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Okay? Now, we know what this, the first part, okay, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Who are the wicked? Esau, Edom is the wicked, okay? Meaning that they're adverse to everything that the Most High, every every law, statutes of command, they're adverse to righteousness, okay? Because you have sons of man, sons of, uh, sons of the Most High, and sons of the wicked, okay? The sons of men are those other nations, okay? They're adverse to the scriptures, they're adverse. They're really, the, the, the commandments really aren't made for them to follow anyway, 
but you'll look at the sons of men and, and they'll follow certain things, but they'll still be, you know, all to idols and shit. Uh, but you look at these Edomites, right? These wicked Edomites, you know, and not wicked Edomites, these wicked, okay? Because all Edomites are wicked. Okay, you look at the wicked, right? They're, they're completely adverse to everything. Okay, they're adverse to nature. They're adverse to, to everything on this planet Earth. They don't live in, in proper balance with nature. You know, at least these other nations, these other heathens, they had some relative relative balance with nature. Okay, they wouldn't just... They, they never did the same thing Esau did in the, in the Industrial Revolution area, uh, Industrial Revolution era, which I believe came in in around mid-1800s, where these Edomites were creating factories, you know, when they were... Um, you know, having those smokestack factories, putting all this smoke into the air, you know, poisoning lakes, fucking up lakes. You know, these other nations never did that, okay? All right, yeah, in the second part, we know it's talking about face of the judges, judges, rulers thereof, if not where and who is he, okay? This is a prophecy that happened in the time of the Renaissance, mainly in the time of the Renaissance. It's still going on to this day because even though we bring out the pictures of Yahweh Shai, they'll, they'll constantly fight against it and attempt to cover it up, okay, but this is a different time we're living in, it's not, Esau doesn't have the same pull that he had to back then, that he had back then, okay, because, you know, the prophets are back, okay, the seals are undone, okay, upon the book, this is the, the, the seals of the book are undone, you know, our, our brothers are able to bring out this truth, we're able to get this understanding, okay, so they're not, Esau's not going to be able to pull out the same shit that he was able to do before, you know. Duwadi held by Shimei was shot. Women in the king's court copied this, and midwives found they have much more difficulty getting babies out when mothers lay flat. It's an unnatural position, okay. So doctors were called in a lot more often, obviously. Soon word spread, and everyone started giving birth, lying down. Every Edomite. Believe it, if it was done in the royal household, then it must be for the best. This trend for lying down has stuck interestingly. The media, the media often per perpetrates it. You know, you watch movies, and uh, the woman will will give birth. Uh, yeah, we're gonna skip down a little bit. Is it better to give birth squatting or lying down? Catherine, the same Catherine with the whole hypnobirthing book, who is a leading hypnobirthing teacher and associate member of the Royal College of Midwives. Oh boy. Fucking college, man. I fucking hate college, man. Hate this fucking place, man. And especially a woman that go to college. It's like watching a fucking penguin try to fly, you know? <laughs> Claims that squatting is one of the best and most natural positions for childbirth. Okay? As, as we brought up before, <laughs> Solomon was born that way. He was born and he fell upon the earth. All right? Clean the squatting is one of the best and most natural positions for childbirth because you have gravity on your side and you have the maximum pelvic capacity in this position. Squatting can help deliver a baby more swiftly because childbirth, during childbirth, the baby moves down toward the coccyx, which has a natural curve up. When squatting, this flexes and moves as your baby makes its way down the birth canal. Okay, so pretty much when you, I'm not going to read the entire article, but when a woman is squatting, gravity helps push the baby out. Now, these Edomites changed that, not for any particular good reason. It, they just changed it because they, they have the pride. They have, uh, actually, before I get that one. Yeah, this is the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 3. And this is concerning Edom, by the way. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock. All right, Esau. All right, Esau lived in the cleft of the rock in Mount Seir. Okay, that was a very high place, a very a place of, of like a fortress, you know, whose habitation is high. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Okay, that's how these Edomite, Edomites think. They change laws, they change ordinances. Okay, they, they change the way the world is supposed to work. They change the way nature is supposed to work. Okay, they have these women in these college buildings. They have it in a way they, they have these rape laws, okay, which we have rape laws in, in our in our culture, okay, but if you have an unmarried woman and a man takes her, he is free to do that. According to scriptures, he's supposed to do that. Okay, he's he's completely made this this uh society ass backwards according to nature. Okay. He creates these Title IX things. 
where if I touch a woman, then I'm I'm able an unmarried woman, by the way, a woman that has no husband. Right? If I touch a woman, she can she can um, get get me and ding me for child, for sexual harassment. Okay, which is completely off. Okay. If I get one of these women out here, I could even not even touch any of these women. I can look at them the wrong way and they'll say sexual harassment. They can have that put on my record, even if it's found to be false. Okay. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, then will I bring thee down, saith the most high. Okay. And that's what's gonna happen to Edom. Okay, Esau Edom is going to be brought down. Okay, there's not going to be any more Edomites. And right? you read that in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 18. After a certain amount of time, they're going to be gone. They're going to be exterminated. All right. You know, this is the book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom saved, we are in Providence, but we will turn and build the desolate places. Okay, now I believe when you look into the history, right? This is around the time of the rise of Persia. Is what Malachi was saying this Okay but this is also a future prophecy Okay Esau Edom was brought down During the time of the fall of Babylon The rise of Persia You know because when the Persians came up Of course you had some Edomites in rulership uh, But if I'm correct uh, Certain Edomites They were living in uh, Macedon They moved down to Macedon in Greece And they were kind of trying to push their way Into Greek culture but they were They were kind of sheep herders around this time you know, I may be wrong on that. Okay, but this, I believe this is, I know for a fact this is a future prophecy going to how, you know, the, the great serpent, the devil being sealed up for a thousand years. Okay. Let's say if the Most High Lord host, host just means soldiers war. Okay. They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness, the place of wickedness, and the people against whom the Most High have indignation forever. Indignation means hatred. Uh, why why does the Most High have hatred towards you? Okay, because you change ordinances, you change you change the natural ordinances of the world. Okay, you try you try to exalt yourself as the Most High, saying, you know, your pride, your pride, you believe yourself to be to be the Most High. Okay, this is further examples, you know, in nature. You see this giraffe. Giraffes give birth standing up. You know, you saw Edom. He wants to change laws. He has changed laws and. and just the way the natural order of life, okay? Women are not supposed to be giving birth on a lab table, okay? That's why you have miscarriages and shit, okay? Or the baby dying and getting all fucked up, all right? It's in part not just because of the chemicals that, you know, you, that these women are eating through their food. And yes, by the way, women, when they eat those chemicals, they can actually pass the chemicals through their breast milk and, and fuck up the baby. You know, that's one of the reasons why you really shouldn't have kids in this society, you know, because it's just completely ass backwards, you know. Uh, and then I want to get one last scripture. You know, this just Esau fucking Edom, man. This is the book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Okay. This is talking about uh, the fourth beast, of course. And I believe when he come back, he had a little horn. You know, which is going into America. I don't want to get too far into it. All right. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. When did that happen? Okay. That happened during slavery. Okay. This is happening to this day. Wearing out the saints. He has worn us out. Okay. But he really started with it, you know, in slavery. He worn us out. Okay. Because we had a, there was a time period when we ruled him for a period of a thousand years. Roughly around you know 325 to the 1300s, or you could say the year you know 320 through 325 AD in the time of Constantine to around the fall of Constantinople in 1453. You can that's pretty much at that point Jake was was getting his ass beat. You know then we lost, I believe it was uh, Masala, Masala I believe it was called, which was one of our last strongholds in Spain, the Moors. Okay, which they were Israelites, and then they kicked us out. And then after that, Esau Edom started slavery to hunt down any more he could find. Okay, that's why he called us the Moors or Black Amors. Okay, Tom Molyneux, the Moor. Let me look it up. Okay, of the Most High, where are the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Okay, 
Now, what is that time changing times and laws? What, what is that also going into? He's changed, you know, times. He, he's, he's messed with time periods. He's messed with our images. Okay. He's, he's also messed with nature. You know, once again, he's going against nature. Women are supposed to, even, even this heathen teacher, this Edomite teacher, uh, so-called school teacher, because a teacher really means to, you know, fucking teacher is supposed to teach, right? But she's not really... She, if you don't teach shit, then are you really a teacher? No, you're just a fucking talking, a talking head. I like, guess what these fucking college professors are, talking heads. Fucking, fucking, <laughs> whatever. Just dumb fucking college fucking professors, man. Dumb asses. Right, but this, um, this bitch, right? Even she said that the prime time for a woman to give birth is from the age 16 to 22. And that's when they can just kind of just bloop give out a baby, drop the baby, and keep it moving, okay, and it's even easier, that's why a lot of these young girls die also in childbirth, okay, because they'd have, they'd, they'd give birth a lot easier if they were squatting, if they were able to push the baby out with gravity, they'd have an easier time giving birth, you know, this is a book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, which I didn't bring that out, it says blasphemies, okay, it's blasphemies, Christianity, Catholicism, you know, which that really came from us, right? It really came from the, from the Moors, from our people, okay, when we ruled Europe for a period of a thousand years, the, the bottomless pit, okay? But, you know, <clears throat> it goes into that. Democracy is a big one. Democracy, the schooling system, which once again, that... That didn't exactly come from us. That was mostly a heathen construct. You, you had schools all the way back in Babylon, even in the time of Abraham. So, I mean, it, it, these devils don't, don't come up with nothing, man. Okay? And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. All right, that's happening to this day. I think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Okay, so until a time and until a... Until a time in times and the dividing of times. Okay, that's when, all right, the time of Jacob trouble hits. They're gonna be, we're gonna be in their hand until that time of times come. Okay, and dividing of times. Talking about Jacob's trouble, the chariots coming. All right, and our Ratazam of that number being beamed up. Okay, and being being saved. Okay, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. I was gonna be saved, gonna be saved by those chariots. I don't Ratazam of that number, or dying. Okay, if I have to die, you know, I'll just be, uh, my spirit will go back up to the spirit realm, and I'll, and I'll sleep with the fathers. <laughs> I'll sleep with the fathers, you know, and that's just how it's going to be, man. You know, yes, yeah, this is a quick lesson. Well, really not too quick, but hey, it's just, uh, you know, you can't control the spirit, you know. You may want to make a video quickly, but hey. If, if, if the spirit bring up bring a couple of scriptures to me, I'm gonna bring them out, man. You know, so it's a quick lesson on how uh, women are supposed to give birth. There's a little video here that I'm gonna drop in the description box. Oh, it's gone. I'll put it in the description box, but it's pretty much a video of a woman giving birth in a squatting position, just so you have a visual uh, cue. They would they would kind of sit in the squatting position and they would have their back against a a, uh, you know, cushiony surface, and they would just push the baby out. All right, so first and foremost, well, not first and foremost, but, you know, Kol Halali Mihawo by Shim Yahweh Shai, by Shim Harakakadash, Obraknam. That's all I got. You know, keep pushing, my brothers. You know, keep making your videos. Keep doing camps. Yadu Ratazah, come out tomorrow. I'll head a camp. I'll bring out various topics, various different things, you know. And just do the works. That's all I got to be continued. Shalom on.